So all food will have an impact on your breathing to a varying degree, but it should not greatly decrease your control pause. So a way to find out what foods are working best for you and what foods may be damaging to you is to use the skills you've learned through the breathing center. And that is before you're eating, take your control pause, see what it is. And then about 10 or 15 minutes later, you wanna take it again. And I talked about this a little bit before, but if your control pause really drops down a lot, that's a very clear indication this food is not right for you at this time. And it may even be a little, just a little bit of something. Sometimes you may also notice right away that you have a shortness of breath, you have tightness in your chest or other symptoms. Um, and you'll know without even taking your control pause. But if you're early on in the program, it is such a wonderful tool to use. Okay, so use your control pause to figure out what foods are helpful for you and what foods might be a little more damaging for you. And this brings me to the next um, area that I want to talk about, which is simplifying your meals by simplifying your choices. Many of us are used to eating meals that look like maybe a Thanksgiving day spread every day of the week. You know, a lot of combined foods, four or five different dishes, um, all delicious, might be all healthy. But this can also um, add to heavy breathing by eating too many complicated meals at one time. So simplify your food combining. A perfect meal would look something like maybe a little bit of brown rice or another whole grain and a lot of vegetables. Very simple. Don't eat too many kinds of different food in one meal. Um, so again, we're in spring. Paying attention to the seasonal shifts where you live is really important. In the springtime, you may have noticed that maybe you're just not as hungry as you were a few weeks ago, a month ago. Um, and, you know, you don't feel like eating the first thing you get up in the morning. Maybe you just really want some nice warm water to drink or some white, uh, some nice, uh, you know, maybe a little herbal tea or something like that. And this is our body's way of letting us know that in the springtime is the season for detoxifying, lighter eating, um, getting rid of the heavier fatty foods that we had in the winter time. So naturally not being as hungry in the springtime is a good thing. It's a very good thing. And if you're not hungry, it is definitely okay to skip a meal, to skip a meal or two. Um, do not, um, don't be driven by a specific meal schedule. This comes back to the awareness part of you being aware of what your body needs. Um, accessing your hunger level and just eating when you're hungry. So in order to do that, we all have to slow down and pay attention, right? Sometimes we don't even know we're hungry or not. We're just eating because it's noontime and we're supposed to eat. And we eat and was I hungry? Wasn't I hungry? I don't know. So let's bring a little more awareness to our meal schedules. 
steps, and this requires us to slow down. And I would recommend that you always sit down to eat. Always sit down when you're eating a meal. Many people that I work with will eat their whole meal standing up in three minutes over the sink. Now, what do you think that does to our health and to our breathing levels? I think you can guess it's probably not very supportive, right? Many of us leave and a few hours later, it's like we're hungry. Well, we didn't put the attention and time and focus into sitting down and consuming that beautiful meal that we prepared for ourselves. So always sit down. And maybe when you're sitting down to the meal, you've had a lot going on before, right? Or you have a lot of thoughts going on in your head. You're really not present. So sit down and take a few minutes to become present. This is a perfect time to really focus on some gentle buteco breathing. It's going to really help you to be more balanced and focused and it's going to support your system in being able to digest the food that you're eating. Okay, and this is what we want because the food is nourishing us and it's helping us to heal as well. So reduce breathing, practicing your breathing. Maybe you want to light a candle. That's a beautiful little um, way to bring our focus inward. A lot of people will say a prayer. Um, maybe just a moment of thanks. It could be silent or it could be with the people that you're with. But these are all really important things that help us to slow down. Take your time to chew. Every bite really well. Many people are fast eaters. We're programmed in the society to do everything really fast. So for a lot of people, this is a hard, hard thing to do. But you want to set yourself up for success. Take your time. Chew every bite well. And avoid talking while you're eating your meal. I mean, I know our dinner table tends to be kind of quiet. But sometimes, you know, it's interesting how very um, important topics or stress-inducing topics come up when you're sitting around the dinner table. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this before, right? People start arguing or they're talking about some controversial topic and everyone's getting all crazy about it. Don't do this while you're eating your meal. Or if you are, if pe other people around you are talking, you can just choose not to engage and focus on your breathing and eating your meal. Because what happens when we get excited and we start arguing and talking, it's very, very easy to start mouth breathing, right? <gasps> and I certainly did this quite often. And at one point when I was practicing the Buteco method, I actually, when I was sitting at the table, I would have my little piece of tape right there. So if I got too anxious, I would just put a piece of tape on my mouth until I felt calm enough to take it off and eat. It may, it may sound very simple, but all of those little tools are really, really helpful. So this is your health. Don't worry about what anybody else is thinking. Just do what you need to do. So simplify your meal by simplifying your choices, not just the food that you're eating, but how you're sitting down to enjoy and eat your meal. And the last thing I wanted to say is it's important to eat until you're not quite full only until you're about 75% full. 
And this is going to, doing this over time will help you to reset your body to feel satisfied without feeling stuffed or full. You know, so many of us are just used to eating until we feel full. And at that point, we've probably already overeaten. And overeating also is definitely going to lead to overbreathing. Um, early on again, um, for me, my, I noticed that I could only eat a small amount at a time, much less than I was used to eating. And anything over that would really affect my breathing. So, you know, it's, di it's different for everyone. But don't, don't be alarmed if that's something that you discover as well. Things are going to shift as your breathing becomes healthier. <laughs> 